This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Be sure to hit up the Mad Canadian Food Truck this Sunday, October 18th, at the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery from 11 to 6 p.m. So whatever plans you had for lunch and or dinner and and dinner, be sure to throw that away and go get some Mad Canadian barbecue at the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery from 11 to 6 p.m. off of Tiffin Avenue. Be sure to hit up his social media to find out more information about him and his food truck. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a Ohio-based Toledo, Perrysburg, just outside of Toledo, Perrysburg, Marine-owned, world-class, class, world-class, hand-roasted, micro-roasted, small batch, fresh roast to order, I'm repeating myself, veteran-owned coffee company. I tried to mix it up, and that, that was a giant failure, and I apologize. All of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. Um, integrity is at the core of what they do. What else would you expect from an Ohio company that is owned by a Marine? They do everything the right way, including working directly with farms from far off lands such as Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and other far off places. Some of their most popular coffees are available in K-Cup. Kyle, believe it or not, the Christmas season is not that far away. Uh, so, yes, gift cards are available. And if you really like someone, you can send them, sign them up for a subscribe and save service because that's the gift that keeps on giving. So uh, you can go check out all of these different wonderful coffees and these different wonderful options over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Going on YouTube and the Sloop Cats seems like they're ready for some Team Chaos this week. Uh, they are Team Chaos. <laughs> Our chat sometimes is the living embodiment of, of Team Chaos, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. All right, cool. Let's 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 get this Chaos show started. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right over here. How are you doing today, Jared? I have no complaints. I, I have a bunch of complaints, but none I'm going to air on the show right now. Uh, so, Kyle, I, I kind of want to not mess around. I don't want to waste mm -hmm. any time. I want to get right into these sloop picks. All right. Getting right into it. So, no Ohio State game this weekend so we're going to add in an extra game here to still make it seven games that we're going to be, be picking for our sloop picks so let's get right into it first game we have a good old aac showdown of ucf and cincinnati cincinnati is a i cannot tell what you have your 21 point <laughs> favorite here jared sorry put new graphics in Oh, changing things up on me. Uh, no, it's not a 21 point favorite. We we have it locked in as a 19 and a half point favorite here. 19 I, and a half. Try and try and change things up. And what do I do? I ran it. It's not a 19 and a half point favorite. Jared, I think I think that's not enough. I, Cincinnati is just going to continue riding their success. I don't think um, UCF is. As good as advertised here, I I give the the cover to the Bearcats here. I totally the second the, se the second best Ohio team. Yes, I I totally agree. Um, Cincinnati's out to prove that they belong. They are apps. That's that is their goal from here on out to not just win but to win pretty. Uh, they they need to put all questions of talent and eye test to bed. It is not good enough for Cincinnati to win out, or at least that's what their mindset has to be. 
And I fully expect them to go out here and dominate this football game. Um, when you've looked at when they've played what I would call definitively inferior opponents, Miami, Murray, Temple, they've not just beaten them, they've slaughtered them. Uh, even mm-hmm. Indiana, they put up a, you know, a decent margin over. Uh, it wasn't 20 points. So it wouldn't be a cover by by this game, but I think, again, Cincinnati is motivated not just to win, but to look damn good doing it. And I think that includes getting the cover. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, uh, so looking, chat here. Yeah. Let's, let's see what let's see what chat has here. So we have we have UCF covers, UCF covers, UCF covers, UCF for the chaos. We have a Mountain Union in here. We have a an Auburn College here. And Buckeye Esquire says a cover here. So it looks like like looks like most people are are picking UCF here to yep. um Yeah, that's a bunch of votes against Bus- Bu- Buckeye Esquire and you and me, but our votes don't count in this. So I think we're gonna give the uh the chat vote to UCF. All right. All right, next up here we have Michigan State taking on Indiana. Noon game on Fox Sports One. Michigan State is a, as we locked this in, a three and a half point favorite. And that's an important three and a half. Yeah. That half there. I, I still got Sparty. I still got Sparty. I just, I just do not trust Indiana here. I just, I just don't. Michigan State just find ways to win here. And they're going to find another way to win here. And they'll, they'll win by a touchdown at least. Yes, and yes, and Indiana is without Penix. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, Penix is just feeling a, a little stiff in the shoulder. Uh, I don't think he's going to be able to to work it out. So uh, I, I, just, I don't, I don't. Th- Penix is just not going to be able to to show up and perform. That's 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 the situation at hand here. By the way, can 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 we just talk about for a second? Michigan, Kyle, who did we say was probably the worst team in the Big Ten East? <laughs> Before the season? No, 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 or no. I now. think we were just talking about it, I think, during our secret oh. Patreon episode on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, I think we were kind of on the fence of, like, Maryland and – well, not Maryland. No, no, it was, it was Indiana. Yeah, yeah. It was Indiana. We were saying that Indiana is probably the worst team in the Big Ten East, and – I'm sorry, Michigan State is favored. They're a top 10 team favored by three and a half points against Indiana without their quarterback. What does that tell you about what Vegas thinks about Michigan State right now? Yep. All right. Yep. Uh, that, that, all of that being said, I'm still picking, I'm still picking Michigan mm-hmm. State because uh, right, so it's only three and a half points. But I'm shocked here- the number isn't higher. Yeah, so we got here, we got a Sparty, 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 Teton Jr., um, <laughs> Sparty Rolls. We have a Foo Fighters. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, uh, I, we're, 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 looking at, we're looking at Sparty here. Yeah. All right, next up here, Texas taking on the other Oklahoma team here, Oklahoma State. Uh, noon game as well. This is on Fox. And Texas, Texas is a five and a, is a five and a half point favored over undefeated Oklahoma State. Number twenty five, Texas. This tells you how shit the polls are. I'm just telling, just just pointing it out. It tells you how shit the polls are. Number twenty five, Texas is favored by five and a half points over number twelve, Oklahoma State. And by the way, it's not enough. Oklahoma State is a farce. Much like Michigan State, I'll say, is a farce. These are not teams that belong anywhere near the top 10. Let's look at Oklahoma State. 10 points over Baylor, who's no longer ranked. 11 points over KSU, who is no longer ranked. These teams were barely ranked when they played. 
they beat Boise by one point. They beat Tulsa by five points. They played an FCS school and won by six points. Oklahoma State is nobody. Oklahoma State is nobody. They belong nowhere near the top 10. They are not the 12th best team in the country. It's not even close. Uh, they are a farce. They are a myth. Uh, I'm taking Texas because they they need to salvage this season. Um, then they they need to take some sort of revenge for the the egg that they absolutely laid in the in the latter half of the Red River rivalry. Red River rivalry. You know, this is this is the kind of game, in my opinion. Texas showed up the week before. They put up a good fight. Didn't get the win. Could have won it. Should have won it. But I think I think this is I think this is just going to be a letdown for Texas. Uh, I I have Oklahoma State covering here, but I think Texas might win this game here. But I think it's just going to be very close game, or Oklahoma State would win in here. But yeah, I'll I'll take I'll take um, Oklahoma State to cover. By the chat, where where are you guys at? I see one for Texas and I see one for Oklahoma State. Okay, there's another for Oklahoma State. Can I get one more? Can I get one more? Oh, there's one for Texas. Kyle. Oh, okay. There's an Oklahoma. Okay, I think we already counted you, Buckeye Zach. <laughs> Screw it. We're going. We're going. They're they're picking Oklahoma State. All right. <laughs> potentially yes that 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 is potentially yes. possible yes all right next up jared we have kentucky and georgia not enough points <laughs> georgia is a 22 and a half point favorite not enough 22 and a half not enough oh we're, we're getting kentucky we're getting kentucky in the chat it is a, a lot, lot of points. points. It is a lot of points. But the, it would this would require that I take Kentucky seriously. And um, I don't. I would love not. Nah, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> it would be best for Ohio State if uh, mm -hmm. if Kentucky won this game. That would be best. Mm -hmm. I just I don't see it. I do not see it. I do not see it even a little bit, even though that would be the preferential outcome. Um, I think Georgia wins. And I think the only way they don't win by the allotted 22 and a half points is if they decide not to. Mm -hmm. Can can we. Uh, these this is the points. These are the points. That. That Georgia has given up thus far this season. Three, seven, 13, zero, zero, 10. Are you telling me Kentucky is significantly better on offense than any of those teams? Are they significantly better than Arkansas who scored, who scored zero? Are they significantly better on offense than Auburn who scored 10? Than South Carolina who scored, okay, maybe South Carolina, but they're, I there's a decent chance Kentucky scores less than seven points in this game, seven points or less, which means that Georgia really only needs to score about 30, 31 points to cover, um, which I, I think is totally possible, even. Even with Fedora Bennett at quarterback, which I assume is who's still going to be quarterback, um, I got Georgia with an easy cover here, easy cover. I think they win by 30 plus. I, th I think this is going to be, excuse me. I think this will be really close to the cover. But yeah, I think I think the win by maybe like twenty four points. Uh, I, I do have Georgia to cover, but man, that man, at that that point that point spread is really concerning to me because I, I almost went with Kentucky. I almost did, but I, I got Georgia just because of their stellar defense they have. I think we have a narrow margin giving it to Kentucky in in the votes. Um, Matthew OSU asks us the question, Kentucky, best offense Georgia has played so far? I I don't think so. I mean, it's not 
It might if be it, actually. It, it might, might be. Here's the thing. Even if it is, is it is it absolutely true? Is it definitively true? Are they definitively better than on offense? Because I don't think that they are. They it might I, be the best, but it, if it is, it's by a narrow margin. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I I'm just I'm sorry. I'm not I'm not buying Kentucky as an offensive threat. They scored 16 points against South Carolina. They scored 20 points against Florida, and Florida's got a good defense. Uh, they they did score 42 against LSU, but LSU's dumpster fire right now. Uh, they only scored 28 against. Uh, uh, what is that? Tennessee Chattanooga. Um, what you, you really going to tell me that this Kentucky offense is, is, is pretty good. Actually, I don't buy it. <laughs> Will <laughs> Levis. Thank you, Buckeye Esquire. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I think now. We'll hear from our sponsors. I think this is a I think this is a good point here. So do you want to start us off or do you want me to read a little bit from the go? Mad I'm Canadian? Gonna pull, I'm going to pull up the website. Why don't you go? All right. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company um, mentioned they're going to be they're going to be up in uh, Finley this Sunday at the, um, the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery from 11 to 6 o'clock. Why, why should you go? Well, hear from some of these uh, from the from some of these reviews that have been left after having some of that delicious Mad Canadian barbecue uh, food. Uh, Here's one, ordered some pulled pork, some coleslaw, some corn for the family, and holy crap, Jared, (laughs) was it awesome. Did they say Jared? No, they didn't. The slaw wasn't runny and overly creamy, and and the way it was seasoned was the best slaw I've had in a long time. The corn was fresh and had plenty of spices and fresh green onions on top. Finally, the pork was absolutely fantastic. Very mild, smoky flavor. Not juicy, not dry at all, and very tender. Plan to have TMC Cater, the next event I have for sure. Many, many more reviews just like that. And man, that's making me hungry to get some Mad Canadian food here. So be sure to hit up the Mad Canadian Facebook, Twitter page, find out more information about him and his food truck, food truck and where he's going to head to next. Meg Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. I'm sorry. I, I read I read chat and it threw me. Congratulate gangland. If there if there was any money on who could throw me off my game uh, this episode, you just won it. Um Iron Bean Coffee Company, I already told you why you should buy from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Um, But I I always tell you guys that some of their most popular flavors are available in K-Cup. Well, I have, uh, I'm going to tell you about those three coffees. Those are three coffees. One is the Rage Against the Dying of the Light. Uh, It is a medium roast coffee. Um, It is a... Uh, Colombian coffee that is unusually sweet. It has notes of cherry, milk chocolate, and orange. Um, It's a medium body coffee. Uh, One of the other ones available in K-Cup is the Ride or Die, which is one of my absolute favorite coffees ever. Um, It's a gently acidic coffee. Uh, It has a melodic sweetness. Um, It has notes of milk chocolate, uh, cedar, jasmine, um, it is, it has a real clean finish to it. Uh, it's a Brazilian yellow bourbon coffee bean, uh, with superb smoothness and flavor, uh, has, uh, some notes of caramel, hazelnut, and sweet cream in there. Uh, the other one is the highly caffeinated fierce, which is the alone dark roast coffee available in a K cup. Uh, once again, it is called the fierce, um, The Iron Bean Fierce is a dark roast coffee made with 100% specialty coffee beans to give you the edge and confidence to slay your day. It is 100% natural, tastes smooth, never bitter, with subtle notes of earth and chocolate. And again, did I mention it is it is highly caffeinated? So you can find those coffees and a bunch more coffees over at IronBeanCoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. 
All right, next game here, Jared. We have probably uh, <laughs> Ohio State fans um, game that they probably will not want to watch. <laughs> Purdue and <laughs> Iowa. A little, little <laughs> bit of PTSD here. Yes, Purdue and Iowa, 3.30 game on ABC. Iowa is a 11 and a half point favorite. The not question, enough. Kyle. Not enough, not enough. Not enough. Give me Iowa. Uh, well, f- for one, I disagree. Um, and mm-hmm. it's just it's it's a lot of points for a team that doesn't typically score a lot of points. It's, it's basically. I, I understand it's Purdue, but Iowa is one of the teams with the most punts in the country right now. So if, if we take the Maryland game out as an outlier because of the incredible amount of turnovers in that game. Let's, let's take the Maryland game out as an outlier for a moment. Mm -hmm. They did score. They had a nice margin against Indiana, Indiana as noted, terrible. So, okay. They, they beat Iowa state by 10. They beat Kent state. Who's Kent state. Obviously uh, by 23 points, they beat Colorado state by 10. Uh, they beat Penn State by three. And it should be noted that was Penn State without Clifford for half of the game. I think Iowa wins this game comfortably, yet somehow doesn't cover. I think is basically what this boils down to. I, I think that they win this game by a, probably like 23 to 13. I think they get real close to covering. I think that the game's not really in doubt but still somehow fail to manage to cover what looks like a pretty small cover because it's Iowa, because they're a defense, slow, methodic, trestle ball, low scoring team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I just don't trust Purdue being able to score that much in this game here. I and Iowa just finds a way to be able to create turnovers. And I, I think I think this will get away from Purdue early on and Iowa wins this comfortably and does cover. So what do you got here, chat? What do you got here? Do you have Iowa covering or do you have Purdue covering? We have one vote, Iowa. We have one vote, Purdue. <laughs> we got, we got, we got two votes, Purdue. Purdue. Win. We got Purdue wins 42 to 21. I oh, know he has Iowa winning 10 to six, actually. <laughs> All right. So wait a minute. Okay. But that's still a Purdue. I think, I think they're going Purdue. Let, 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 yep. Let's let I see Matthew typing. Let's let him get a vote in. Uh, uh, Purdue scored 13 against uh, Notre Dame and Minnesota. Not going to be much against uh, not going to be that much against Iowa. Iowa covers. It feels real split, Kyle, but I think we're going to I think we're going. Are we going Iowa here? For the for the chat. One, two, one, two, three. Yep, we're gonna go with Iowa. Okay. Uh the chat picks Iowa. All right. All right. Next game here. By the way, just to- I just I need to say this. Can Purdue Purdue Iowa? Or can Purdue Iowa Iowa? Can they're both don't both don't correct. get don't don't they're get Purdue. Don't get Purdue. Correct. Don't get Purdue. Alabama taking on Mississippi State. So we're going down to SSA country here. <laughs> Alabama and Mississippi State. Um, the cover here is Alabama by 17 and a half. Man, this is just the wrong week for Mississippi State. <laughs> <laughs> this is the wrong week for Mississippi State. They got on the wrong side of the road in this game here. Alabama is just going to come out in full force. And yes, Buckeye Squires, Saban may hang a hundred on this team. <laughs> yeah. Give me, give me, give me Alabama here. Uh, by the way, we have a Mississippi state so far. Um, and we have a, I'm going to assume Buckeye Esquires <laughs> picking Alabama with that comment. Um, that's another Alabama. Um, yeah. I, I think. Kyle, you you took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, Alabama, like a lot of other teams that we're choosing from this game, like Cincinnati needs to prove something. Oklahoma State needs to prove something. Kentucky feels like they need to prove something. 
Iowa feels like they need to continue to prove something. Bama coming off of a loss and everyone's like, well, that's it for the Saban era down in Bama. Well, he is. He is getting up there in age. I suppose maybe he doesn't relate to the young players anymore. Oh, man, the Saban era is over in Alabama. I'll believe it when I see it. And uh, I don't feel like I'm going to see it this weekend. As Kyle uh, very accurately said, Mississippi State picked the wrong week to play Alabama. Bama's out to prove something. They're out to prove that they ain't dead yet. Uh, they might bleed, but they're not dead. Uh, Bama, Bama wins. Bama wins by a lot. <laughs> yes. All right, last game here. So we're going to the ACC here. Oh, what channel? Yep. No one's going to watch this. This is on no, the ACC it it network. Doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> this is the and I ran out of games to pick a game. That's what this is. <laughs> We got NC State and Boston College. This is pretty much a pick them from when we locked in the picks here. NC State's one and a half point favorite, which if we do it now, NC State's favored by three, but it is one and a half right now. I don't I I'll take I'll take NC State here. I, I really like their defense. Offenses. You're eh. a homer. No. No, no. I, I like their defense. I really do like their defense, but it, it's be a really close game. This is pretty much a pick 'em here. So I'll I'll take I'll take the Wolf Pack here. Looks like the chat so far is taking BC. Uh, so it looks like I get the tiebreaker. And uh, yeah, I'm going with Boston College. Kyle, why am I taking Boston College? Do you suspect? Oh no, tell me. Is because it because they're the of uh, Halfley? Is it because of Halfley? It's because they're the underdog. I, I I don't know who wins this. It feels like a real toss up. And are they an underdog by one and a half points? Yes, they are. Is that an absurd reason to pick this game that way? Yeah, it probably is. But guess what? For the most part, the I don't know, I'm going to pick the underdog strategy uh, again, for the most part, has worked out for me this year so far. So I'm going to I'm going to roll with it uh, at least one more time here. All right, that is all seven games here, Jared. Final that is thoughts? all seven games. Final, Final thoughts. thoughts? Uh, I, I think uh, this is a pretty weak weekend for football. I think uh, this is this is a holiday weekend in Ohio. This is the weekend where Ohio State doesn't play and therefore everyone has plans because everyone built their uh, fall plans around that weekend that Ohio State doesn't play. Yeah. So, so um, no, nobody, nobody, just, nobody asks nobody asked this question. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and ask it. Um, I guess I'm just not going to gonna finish my thought then. Nope, you're not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, popular question um, in the past year, past few weeks. I'll ask it again here. Upsets. <laughs> what, what, what game? What game? What game? Um, do you think you could see some chaos this week? Yes, England. Some... Yes, it would have been a good weekend for a wedding. Yes, I know. <laughs> they don't plan weddings around the Ohio State bye week in North Carolina. <laughs> um, Texas, Sarah, Texas over Texas over Oklahoma State. That's, that's would be an well, upset. Uh, by by per the AP, yes, it is. Um, per Vegas, it's not. Um, how about Syracuse over Clemson? Possibly. Here we go. Like, wasn't it? Didn't they beat Clemson a few years ago at their place? I, I I'm trying to remember if that I, if it I was believe, Clemson. I, I believe there was a. I believe so. I don't remember where it was, but I do believe Syracuse beat Clemson in semi. Yeah, it was, years. It was, yeah, it was in it was in Syracuse. So here we are in Syracuse again here. So possibly um, if you want to look for other ones, unranked LSU against Florida. No unranked way. Auburn. Aub, un, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Unranked <laughs> Auburn versus Arkansas. Maybe. Hmm? Maybe. What, what are the chances, if we're just talking pure win-loss, Kyle, mm -hmm. what are the chances that you see Kentucky take down Georgia? None. Zero? You're, zero. you're gonna go zero. Mm -hmm. I'm going you're, zero. I'm going, I'm gonna take the over there. <laughs> Only because I mathematically have no choice. But no, it's probably <laughs> like I think it's like it's it's Five percent, five percent chance of actually pulling that upset. 
Um, looking for upsets, there's just a whole lot of teams not playing. That my 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 overall take right now is that there's just a whole lot of teams just not even playing. Utah could potentially mm-hmm. take down Arizona State. I think that's a possibility. It, um, Baylor over BYU. I think I think Baylor has a has a pretty good shot as well. Um, yeah, I think so. Matthew says Bowling Green over Northern Illinois. I'm just going to take his word for that. I have no I have no clue. Mm-hmm. I, I have uh, no idea what's happening in in the action right now. Just because it's just because it's the Pac-12, maybe Utah over Arizona State. I already said that. Thank you for listening. <laughs> um, that's it. Though. I don't know. I think that's yeah. It. I I don't it's, really see any other games. Yeah. I I really don't. I don't. There's just, like I said. There's just a whole lot of teams just not playing this weekend. Um, I don't think there's a great deal of chaos potential here which of course means that like cal's going to beat oregon and every single chaos opportunity will happen just to prove me wrong and quite frankly i'm all here for it kyle what if virginia tech takes down pitt pitt mind you is uh the leader (laughs) in their particular division in that particular conference yeah (laughs) yeah Uh, speaking of uh, which, are the mighty, mighty um, Wake Forest playing this weekend? They are not. Oh, I, I man, not there's they another are. chaos potential down the drain. Yeah, they are not playing this weekend. Oh, well. All right, uh, chat, does anyone else here have any questions before we wrap this one up? Wake Forest for national champs. I can see it. I can see no, it. No, no, I can't. I can't even I can't keep that joke going. Just on the real rare possibility that someone thinks I'm being serious, I, I I cannot keep that joke going. How many sacks does Georgia get? Give me an over under. Oh, uh, I I have I have another one here, Jared. Five and a half. I'm gonna go under. Um, yeah, I'm gonna but go I think I think here. that's a good I think that's a good number though. I think that's a good number. I think it's probably four or five. I don't think this would be considered team chaos. Well, it's not, but. Army over Wisconsin. I it's not definitely not because neither of those teams are relevant at this point. But no, I, Wisconsin is not a bad football team. I swear, no one will believe me, and I will keep I will keep pounding the table for Wisconsin that they're a much better football team than you would think by looking at their results. All right, all right, Jared. Um, some some questions here we have. From Buckeye Zach, which out of the four teams the Buckeyes must play in the Big Ten would be the toughest test to get past? Penn State, and Mich- Penn State, and Michigan State at home, Teton, and Ann Arbor, or the potential Iowa matchup in the Big Ten championship game? Um, it's it's Michigan. It's Michigan if Clifford doesn't play. It's Penn State if Clifford does play. I think I think it just depends upon where Clifford's at. Mm, I agree. I agree exactly with that. Uh, uh, um, it's 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 still Penn State if Clifford plays, but I'm gonna actually gonna say it's Iowa if Clifford doesn't play. I'm gonna I'm gonna say mm-hmm. it's not Michigan. I'm gonna say it's Iowa. Yep. And if we get past this four team gauntlet, where would this project us at the CFP bracket as far as favorable semifinal matchups. Um, it's, it's, it's fine. If Ohio State wins out, they're going to the playoffs and everything will either happen or not happen from there. Um, I, I'm not super worried about it. I'm really not super worried about the playoffs or anything like that. You're going to beat mm-hmm. Michigan State. You're going to beat Michigan. Um, you should beat Penn State. Um, you should beat Iowa. You do all of that. You 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 have an amazing strength of schedule. You have an amazing resume and everything will be fine. All right, next uh, one here. As, Duncan, as far Duncan as the- like two versus three or four versus one, Buck Isaac, um, it's a lot of that just depends upon like if if Georgia's an undefeated SEC champion, they're gonna get the number one spot. And it doesn't matter what Ohio State does. Um, it, it, I think Ohio State, if Ohio State wins out, 
I think that one, they go to the playoffs and two, they're going to get seated higher than Cincinnati. So without any assistance from any chaos, if everything goes like standard from here on out, I think Ohio State probably moves up to I would Kyle, does Ohio State move up to number two? I think they leapfrog Cincinnati. They would Iowa would go down because Ohio State would have taken them down. Um, you look at you look at you look at they'll have resume. a better resume than Oklahoma. And and I I don't know I don't know what the college football playoff committee will choose to to um base their ratings this year because it always seems to change every year. One one year it will be, oh well, this team lost to this team and then the next year it's oh well they well this team beat these teams here so i like to see that i would like to see maybe this just the homer and me it should be who you beat it should be who you beat you you if you if you lose a close game against a highly ranked team it's still a loss you didn't beat a highly um, ranked team and if you have ohio state beating four teams and let's just say they're end up both all four of them in the top 15, 17, that's four wins right there. That will get you in no matter what, with one that, loss, with, with one of those being a big, being a conference championship game. I, I, I agree. That being said, I don't think Michigan, Michigan state is renting territory right now. I, I agree. I agree. But you know what? A lot of teams are right now that are ranked. Oklahoma State and Kentucky come to mind. Those are teams that are just renting territory near the top 10 right now. There's a lot of teams in and near the top 10 who don't belong there because, quite frankly, no one does. Um, mm-hmm. As evidenced by our tier list that we do every every Tuesday, the, the drop off from A tier to B tier is significant. Yes. All right. Uh, next question here, Duncan from the Discord. Can we all agree to stop with the "Is Stroud a Heisman candidate?" Stop uh, talk. I can we all just agree to stop pretending like the Heisman is any? It just it is important, is prestigious. Can we just stop with the Heisman? Yep, I agree. We would put uh, way nope. too much weight on this thing that has clear geographic bias in how it's voted on um it, it's only really available to quarterbacks most of the time with mm-hmm. rare exceptions um it's it's a joke of an award and just throw out the heisman i'm done with it yep all right nomad asks is if cincinnati makes the playoff this year as a group of five will fickle ever leave cincinnati once they join the big 12 I don't see why he should. I think it's possible. If Franklin goes to USC and if Penn State calls Minus Fickle, Scotland, yes. I I think that that's a scenario that has a whole lot of possibility to it. Now, there there's a lot there because maybe Franklin doesn't go to USC. Maybe he stays at Penn State. Okay, well then that's that's probably it then. That that's 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 probably it. Now, right. what if Franklin does go to USC, but Penn State instead of going after Fickle goes after Halfley, which I think is a very real possibility, okay. uh, and I think a very good possibility. Uh, right. uh, there, there's a lot up in the air there. Last question here from Nomad. Since it is, um, since it is uh, shenanigans here, does Jimmy Harbs microwave his nachos? Uh, almost, almost, yeah. Uh, it's it's almost a certainty. The real question to me in regards to Jimmy Harbaugh and his and his nachos is: Does he cut up the hot dogs first, or does he cut them up after they're put in the microwave? Is he is he putting his cut up hot dogs on the nachos? Pre or post microwaving? He puts ice cubes in his milk. <laughs> oh my God. That's not even a joke. That one's just accurate. I guarantee you he puts ice cubes in his, like in his D milk. That's a vitamin D milk 
uh, that he sniffed before he drank it because it's it's a couple days past expiration. But that ain't hurt nobody. <laughs> all right, Jared, that's all the questions we have here for today. All right. Do you have anything in Kyle? I don't even feel like doing the thing. Uh, Patreon, pay us three dollars a month and you get to hang out with these goof nuts down here in the chat. You get premium access to the discord server. You get to listen to our recordings live. You get early access to episodes. You get access to our uh, secret Wednesday episode that is really just a shit show. I'm telling you guys right now, if you've ever just been like, I wish these guys would just talk and not have to worry about football and was just complete nonsense for about 30 to 40 minutes. That's what the Wednesday episode is. Um, yeah, that that's yeah. Yeah. Goof nuts. Uh, Animaniacs. These, these, uh, this is all, this is all accurate. Um, that's what that episode is. And I have to say, it's 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 the it's the episode I most enjoy recording. I don't know if it's our best episode of the week or not, but it's the one I enjoy the most. So uh, you get access to that. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, there was a soccer game that played as we were recording, Jared. I'm I'm aware. And they won. They did. I, I've team been US, team USA, team team USA with a big win in lower.com stadium and for those who've been living under a rock that is the columbus crew stadium <laughs> yes yes it is uh we, sometimes we just call it crew stadium uh we mm -hmm. also sometimes call it the death star it's fine don't worry about it yeah no that's it that, that's that's a, that's all i got here gangland's new nickname is patrick star and he has no say in it actually he does have say in it because he just gave it to himself all right, Kyle, that's that's it. Uh, tonight's ending music uh, will be by a uh, a guy who goes by the name of Saint Lennox. He is um, from the Cincinnati area. I believe he lived in Columbus for a minute, but I think he started his professional career in the Cincinnati area. I think he's off in. Uh, I think he's off. In, you know what? Gangland, do not disrespect him. I actually think you'd really, really like him. I don't know what I base that on other than just stuff, but you be nice, damn it. Uh, so that's St. Lennox. Um, I think he's off doing his thing in New York now, but like I said, started his career in Cincinnati. So, uh, be sure to sort of folksy, sort of a folksy, but, um, not, not old fashioned folksy. I don't know. Singers just like, he's a singer songwriter, dude. And I enjoy him. So stick around. If you're listening to this on your podcasting app, um, if you're listening to this on YouTube, there, there'll be a link down in the notes and you can you can listen there so with all of that being said i'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer listen to local music and of course support your local podcasters once again this is saint lennox mm -hmm.